This is Love Scotland with Jackie Burt. Hello and welcome to the Love Scotland podcast. And for my guest today, that phrase Love Scotland could not be more apt. Sam Hewan is an actor best known to millions around the world for his role as Jamie Fraser in TV's Outlander. The phenomenally successful series is about a nurse from the 1940s who time travels back to Jacobite Scotland and falls in love with Jamie, a Highland warrior. Being part of Outlander has brought Sam fame and opportunities, but the filming of it, often in the rugged parts of Scotland it depicts, also recently reignited that love of his country and its wide open spaces. So much so that Sam has written a book about one particular journey in the wilds. It's called Waypoints and it's out now. Sam, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much. What a lovely introduction. Oh, thank you. Well, your book, genuinely, it came to me late. I devoured it in a couple of nights. I really enjoyed it. And it surprised me on two fronts. Uh One, I've always hankered after doing the West Highland Way. Mm. And after reading this, I am now definitely said, going to do you, it. You seem like you're determined to do that. So job teeth. done, job <laughs> done. Also, though, I was really surprised by how honest it was about oh, your life. Thank you. Yeah. Is that something you knew you were going to do at the outset? Or did that honesty develop? As you were writing it. Yeah, that's a really good question because I think, um, well, it's two things, the book. It's a love letter to Scotland. You know, it's the West Highland Way. It's about the walk that I did. And the other half of the book is a memoir. It felt like, forgive me, you know, the right waypoint in my life right now to write it. You know, it felt like I've been through this journey as an actor, as a jobbing actor growing up in Scotland and and, um, trying to break, I guess, break Hollywood or break, you know, the industry and then finally getting some success on on Outlander. So, yeah, it's something that I never thought, though, that I would be as honest. The loss of my father actually during the beginning of season one of shooting Outlander was a big moment in my life. I didn't know him. He left when I was 18 months old, but going to see him in his last moments uh, and visit him and learn a bit more about it had uh, definitely a, a, an effect on me. Uh, and I think just writing about that has been quite cathartic, I think. In the foreword, I think that sums it up because the foreword, um, it's described as a parable of the longer journey to becoming the leading actor that you are today. So it's got highs and lows, mm. but what shines through is resilience. And we'll talk a little about that later. Or but stupidity. F- no, well, I, okay, <laughs> in a way, in a way, because <laughs> I was struck by your impetuousness. Now, uh-huh. this is a walk. This is about 100 miles with mm-hmm. a little mm-hmm. mountain climb at the end. Oh, we won, yeah. Tell me about the madness that prompted it. Well, I suppose my life is a little mad. You know, I, I work on this TV show. It's, it is, they're long days. Yeah, you know, I'm not going to say we're you know, digging coal or saving lives. But we're certainly on a job that, that is quite uh, demanding of your time. It's, it's kind of a stamina. It's quite draining on your energy. And I had this small gap this time last year, almost to the very day before Halloween that I decided, you know, I have this week off before I had other commitments. So I thought, you know what, it's something I've always wanted to do. I've always wanted to do the West Highland Way. Now's the time. So with very little preparation, and in hindsight, you know, that's definitely something that I should have thought about. <laughs> Uh, I went to a local outdoor store, bought everything in the store and um, set off the next day. Uh, and, and I think from that very first moment, I was re- you know, really questioning, why am I doing this? And, uh, and as you will find out in the book, you know, by day two, uh, you know, I almost gave up. You had been filming just before you set off. Right. You went out for a jog in Glen Etive, and I have to say that is one of the National Trust for Scotland's places. Wow. It's beautiful, it it's is. moving. But at the same time, you know, you could have decided to do anything. Mm. But it comes back to what was happening in your life at that time. Yeah. And what scenery does to you, what the great outdoors does to you. You were raw. Is that why you decided on that particular day? Mm. I need some sort of spirituality, perhaps, if that's not overplaying it. I don't know. No, I mean, absolutely. Firstly, I think Scotland does, for me, 
Uh, and I think for many people, you know, the landscape gives you a, a sense of spirituality. There's a connection to, that we have to the land, sc Scottish people. Or, or if you come here, you, there's a tangibility. You can feel the people that have lived here in the past. And uh, it's very much, um, very much present. And especially in Glenetiv or Glencoe, which is where we were, you know, the history that is there. I think we all have a sort of connection to Glencoe when you go there. It's so dramatic. You know, you've got the Bucky, the Bacalet of Moor, the Great Herdsman Mountain there, and you've got the Devil's Staircase and all the stories about the, you know, the massacre that was there. We had been shooting there, Outlander, a scene that actually became the opening of season six, but actually we shot it at the very end of season six. And we were there, and that morning I, um, I decided to go for a run, a run along a segment of the West Island Way, very short part of the run and as I was doing it, I was thinking why have I never never done this you know the the beginning of the West Highland Way actually starts really close to my house so it felt right and actually you know, again also Glencoe is featured in my life in uh, Men in Kilts it was the starting point for this mad uh, road trip that I went on with my co-star Graham McTavish so yeah it, it definitely it's somewhere that I've always wanted to do and that the walk that I've always wanted to do and then I guess as you said you know about being raw I think I needed time out. I needed uh, to switch off. There's a scene in Local Hero, which is a movie that I try to get into mm. just about every podcast, where <laughs> where the locals <laughs> are being berated for wanting to ruin their own environment. Or, mm. uh, and they say, you can't eat scenery. Mm. That may be the case. I mm. understand that. Mm. But if you turn that around, scenery can feed you. Mm. Incomers, visitors like us. Yep. I think it feeds our soul. It does. Yeah. And it's like nowhere else, I think. You know, I mean, I've recently been in America and I did a bit of a road trip up to Yellowstone, at Wyoming and Montana. And the scenery there is obviously, you know, incredible. It's vast, very, very different to ours. But there's something about Scotland, there's something about the wild places. And especially when you're on your own, you know, I talk about in the book, you, after a couple of days of walking and you don't see anyone, you don't speak to anyone, you do kind of lose it a little bit. But also the scenery takes over. And I think I was at the first few days sort of fighting it, trying to assert myself on the landscape. And then well, as soon as I relaxed into the walk and allowed it to dictate, you know, when I stopped and when I walked for hours, it, I really enjoyed it. So you set off in this madcap scheme. Mm. You have got far too much equipment. Spoiler alert, the backpack does not... Yes. In the movie with you, okay? So that's 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 all I'll say. Yes, I'm sorry. No, no backpacks were hurt in the making of this. But uh, when you set out, mm. did you know you were going to write about it? I did. Yes, I did. I I was. I knew I was going to be writing a book. I knew I wanted to do an adventure around that. I didn't quite realize it would be as much as a a, a memoir. It was more about just an adventure. Uh, and by the end of day two. Um, you know, spoiler alert, I I was going to give up. I was I was so close to giving up. And I thought, well, no one really knows that I'm doing this walk. So I could just go home, go back to bed and no one will know that I failed uh, and it will be fine. But then I thought, well, then there's no story, is there? So there's no book. So I guess initially that was what motivated me to, to leave my front door on that sort of blustery autumnal day. But I was seeking something else. I was seeking some sort of solitude and solace and um and a place to reflect and i mean where better to reflect on upon your life and your journey than you know the great highlands of, of scotland and what about the device that's used in the book of of weaving mm. your walk yeah. and your life story yeah was, was it always going to be like that or did that evolve it really evolved and it was strange how much it kind of did work as a device because, you know, I was a jobbing actor. Uh, I am a jobbing actor, or I was, and, uh, you know, had many, many success, but many failures. And I think the ups and downs really, as soon as I looked back on the memoir side of it and then looked back at the journey, in hindsight, I was like, well, this this really fits really well. And, and even reaching the top of Ben Nevis or seeing the mountain and the elation that I got um, also kind of married really well with the the sort of securing of this life-changing TV role that I've that I've had in the last decade. It's strange. We change, obviously, as we get older and we gain experiences. But what happens to us in our childhood determines so much of the adult that we become. Mm. And reading about it and how in your childhood you were entranced by legend, by Arthurian stories, mm -hmm. by Robert the Bruce, you talk about swinging your imaginary sword and shield. Right. Um, I think it's almost thing that, right, this guy is going to be 
in Outlander. It's right. going to yeah. it's yeah. going to play a part Funny, in it? his yeah. in his a- adult life. It's almost like you were made for it. Yeah, it's it is a very strange one. It, I mean, I, you know, I don't know if I believe in uh, you know, you know, in your fate or destiny or anything like that. However, it, it does feel right. You know, I did. I was born and brought up in the southwest of Scotland on the grounds of a, an ancient castle. I used to play in there and imagine myself in this castle. And I certainly was obsessed with, you know, the Arthurian legends and br- the Bruce. And, you know, here I am playing essentially, you know, a Scottish Highland warrior, the king of men. But even on the walk, you know, I came across a lochan that, uh, you know, legend has it that, you know, Bruce's sword was thrown in there, which is, you know, very similar to the, you know, Lady of the Lake and the Arthurian legend of Excalibur. But even that, you know, it, I just, it resonated with me on the walk. From my point of view, I'm always banging on about trying to take kids out into the great outdoors mm. or taking them to historic castles. Yeah. They may be old ruins through yeah. adult eyes, yeah. but from a child's eye, you're oh. forgetting that ingredient, that imagination. Yes, yes, that's lovely you say that. I, I absolutely agree. I, I think as a child, you know, it's still alive. You, you know, as soon as you're told these stories, you kind of imagine these people there and I mean, we've got so many great ones, and not just, you know, ancient castles. I mean, one of my favorites, the Antonine Wall here, you know, the Romans that were here, I think is such a fascinating part of history in Scotland. And um, yeah, I think for children, it's important that we get them out there. And we've, we've, we're, we're so lucky in Scotland. We have so many great sites that you can take children or, or adults that like to pretend they're children <laughs> to explore. In the book, I keep coming back to this honesty, and especially in terms of having a career. People would look at you now and assume it's that overnight success thing. Mm, mm. But my goodness, you worked your butt off. Right. You had a lot of near misses. <laughs> yes. You you yeah. had a lot of knockbacks. And yeah. it's that resilience once again. Mm. At the outset, were you always going to be that candid about your failures? Uh, probably not. And when I look back at the writing, I'm like, well, maybe I've, I've lent too much into the failures and not no, sort of celebrated no, 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 the no, successes. No. But... Um, but no, I mean, it's a huge part of being an actor and I think, uh, or a creative in the industry. And I think, you know, my mother is uh, an artist uh, and she always instilled in me, you know, that it's not going to be easy, that it's going to be a difficult journey. And I think, um, I don't know whether if it was, as I said before, stupidity or, or resilience or stubbornness, but I had a belief in that I wanted to do this. And I always knew I wanted to to act or be in that world and yeah I mean I think also if there's something to take away from the book it's you know just encouraging people about perseverance and that hard work does pay off. And you mentioned in the book that that when you were an up-and-coming actor you would devour books by other actors to learn what an actor's life was like. Yeah. Well your book has now joined that canon because I think it's a I think it's a great waypoint if mm. you like for young actors who Mm. see you immensely successful Mm. And can see clearly that you had very, very low points. And what not to do, yes. But um, no, I I did. You know, I I was very lucky. I went to the Conservatoire in Scotland, the Royal Scottish Academy at the time. And um, I remember going through the library each week there and they had, you know, a great, great number of books from, you know, greats there. And it was um, really important to me that that sort of uh, period, you know, still relatively young and and impressionable but um i actually been working with their conservatory recently i've created a couple of scholarships there to encourage young producers or actors to also think about other things not just you know waiting for the phone call or waiting for the to land the job you know for instance writing a book or creating your own content or writing scripts or just to realize that there's more to creativity and to the industry than maybe you would have first imagine there was one scene that really shone through and stayed with me. It was one, one of your many jobs and you were serving cocktails at a fancy do yeah. and you ended up serving a cocktail to a contemporary of yours yes. who had made it big as an actor. Uh-huh. And at that point, I think you'd had quite a lot of knockbacks and I mm. felt at that point that those hue and castle walls began to buckle just a little yeah. was that a particularly low point it was uh, yeah i had uh been to america a number of times i'd you know been working on and off I had some relative success and then you know kind of was back to square one uh, and was you know in my early 30s and i do yes i was working in uh, london 
I think it was the V&A there. And, you know, we're, a lot of actors were employed to sort of pour cocktails and be good hosts for the guests there. And yes, Richard Madden uh, of, of Game of Thrones fame was there as a guest. And I knew him uh, for many years ago from the Academy. And uh, he came up and he put his drink on my tray or I had to hold his drink. And he didn't quite didn't see, notice it was me. He was very busy. And I sort of had to stand there and hold his drink. And as he came back, he took it and, and sort of walked off. And it wasn't it wasn't that I you know felt ashamed or you know was jealous of him or anything like that. It was more just that I realized that I was not on the path that I wanted to take. And, and in fact, the walls of Hewan's Castle, if anything, were probably strengthened by that because it was like, oh, OK. I really now need to oh, dig deeper. Oh, I like it. Oh, I like that. That's a great approach. Oh, thank you. I'm also very heartened by your honesty about how you have to look in the industry because you don't hear men talking mm. about it. Lots of women mm. about about the pressures. Why yeah. was that important to include it? Oh, yeah, very, very important. It's a, it's a huge part of being an actor or actress, but especially an actor. And I guess things are changing slowly. Um, certainly for women, I think, you know, there's a lot more awareness about um, body issues, but also about the pressures put on women. But I think men, we've never really spoken about it. We'd it also, affected your health. It did. You know, I was, you know, young. I had very little information. Uh, I knew I had to look a certain way. And so the way I thought to look in the best shape I could was to, you know, not eat and to, to run as much as I could. And to re I, re I really did sort of get a hang up around food and um, around my body shape uh, for a, a long time. And, and thankfully, you know, that led me on a journey to, of health and wellness and led me to sort of educate myself. And is essentially probably why I created My Peak Challenge, which is my charity fundraiser platform, because I want to share that information with people because you realize that people still don't really understand where to look or where to get good information about, you know, a healthy lifestyle. But the, the body issue thing is, is something because there are pressures for male actors. We're, we're expected to take your top off at any point, uh, have a six pack and, and sort of be fine with it. And actually, I think it's as exposing for a male actor to do that as, as it is for a woman. Let's take a break for a moment. And when we come back, we'll be talking to Sam about the life changing role of Jamie Fraser and Outlander, about whiskey, about kilts and motorbikes, although not all at the same time. Back in a moment. A donation to the National Trust for Scotland, no matter how small, will help to protect the places that make Scotland so special. With your help, we can respond quickly to mountain wildfires or fix damage from winter storms. And we can carry out vital work to ensure historical sites and fragile wildlife survive for future generations. Just search National Trust for Scotland and click donate. Welcome back to Love Scotland. I'm with Sam Hewan, actor, producer and author, and notably about his new book Waypoints, which charts the ups and downs of his career alongside a challenging and often funny trek along the West Highland Way. Sam, enough downs, OK? Right, right, let's talk about that utterly joyous moment. Let's do it. When you find out that you have landed the mm. part of Jamie Fraser. Oh, yes. Tell us about the run-up to it. Yes, uh, I'd, I'd returned uh, back from America and was working in a bar, as mentioned. And I was also, you know, 34 years old and, and was really beginning to question, can I continue to do this? You know, living in a tiny bedroom in a shared apartment I couldn't really afford to pay my rent each month and I was like you know what? I'm gonna be 40 soon and can I continue on this path and at that point you know you never know where it's gonna come from but I was asked to audition for this show that I'd never heard of uh, which was a book series Outlander and as soon as I read the sides which was pretty much taken from the book I felt I knew him and it was it was strange because I think he was a culmination of all the parts that I would played you know there were elements of theater or, or tv that i'd done from different characters and i went in and it was a really quick process two weeks we uh we did a screen test um with one of my best friends from scotland and um it, it went really well and, and before i knew it i was sort of on this on this train this roller coaster that hasn't stopped for for almost 10 years but tell me about that supermarket moment <laughs> yes yes I, well i think i was in you know there are obviously other supermarkets available but i think i was in waitrose which is seems very Ooh, posh very posh for a, a man that uh, at that time couldn't afford his rent but I, I was probably buying the bargain vegetables or whatever was you know the cheap, the throwaway things but um no i i got a call from my amazing agent who's happens to be scottish and um 
she told me I got it and I, I just I celebrated I think for a week but it was a really special moment but also interesting because you know I still didn't really know what to expect uh, and certainly didn't think that the show would have this sort of runaway success or that it would last this long. There are several instances in the book when you talk about the with with great respect the legions of fans of Outlander uh, and their absolute passion for it. Mm. What is it, do you think? This is a really difficult question about it that elicits so much loyalty. Uh, it's, it, I mean, look, I, I think firstly, Diana Gabaldon has written something that really hits home. You know, she's written, she's on her 10th book. Um, I think people really, really respond to this love story there, this idealistic love story, this unrequited love between these two people, the history side. I think there's so many things in the books for everyone. Uh, but I think the show, to take it back to Scotland, is that that's a huge part of the show. I think Scotland is a really big character of the TV show. And I think people respond to that. You know, people want to see, you know, the wilds of Scotland. And, and even when we're in America, which we are now shooting for America, we're still in Scotland. It's It's doubling for North Carolina and Philadelphia. So it's hard to put your finger on what it is, but I think it's the characters and, and the accumulation of all these factors, the historical side, the, the fantasy side. In those early days, it's it's very difficult to think about it now when it's such a success and you are mm. so synonymous with a character mm. that Diana Gabaldon obviously saw something in you and described you as Jamie Fraser to the heart. So after years of playing the character, how much is Sam Hewen in the Jamie we see on the screens now? That, that's a great question. And I I mean, look, every character you play, you have to put yourself in it. And I honestly, to tell you right now, don't know. I don't think I'm going to know until I, till it finishes, till I've left the role and I look back and I see how much he's changed my life. Uh, I live with the character every day, all day. You know, we, we're, we've we been shooting now for almost 10 years. And so it's very much he's ingrained in my life. Everything I do is is around that character and around the TV show. So, yes, there's definitely elements of me in him. But also, you know, I'm nothing like him. And he's probably a better walker than I am. <laughs> he doesn't ride a motorbike. Yes. Uh, you film a lot in studios, but you also film a lot in the wide open spaces. I know mm. this because every time I go to a National Trust for Scotland property, they say, oh, Outlander's been here. Oh, Sam's been here. Do you have a favourite? I mean, you filmed in Falklands. Palace, Kouros, Glencoe, etc. Do you know, or is it just a whirl for you? It's so hard. Yeah, I mean, no. Um, the, I mean, the one you were mentioning there are some favourites. I mean, Kouros is incredible. It's like stepping back in time there. We filmed in Edinburgh. We filmed, uh, you know, up north. We filmed in a lot of castles. It's really hard to pick a favourite. I mean, for me, the area around Kinloch Rannoch is very special. Uh, Shahali and the mountain there, is, it's where we have the standing stones where Jamie and Claire go through. That for me is something very special. But what I love about it as well is it also gives me the opportunity to explore parts of Scotland I haven't been to. And most recently, we were up near Aber Aberfeldy uh, and I went up to climb some mountains there for a couple of days and it was it was incredible. And so I do, I do feel very lucky. So I get to see parts of Scotland that, that are just there on your doorstep. But you, you don't even realise. It's also very lucky that the places, the heritage points are still there. And yes. that they have been looked after. Yep. We did another podcast about movie locations mm. and the fact that the uh, location managers are just awestruck mm. by the heritage, mm. the existing heritage mm. that we've looked after. Well, we, I mean, Jamie Fraser's um, home his ancestral home is at Mid Hope Castle, uh, Hopeton, and you, you walk in there, and you know it's it's incredible. And these sort of castles are just, you know, fully realised. Okay, that one is uh, inside is, is is derelict, but some of the castles we we work at, you know, have been carefully maintained or or restored, and it's it's amazing. And I'm sure the location scouts are, are just in awe when they come over here and they get to see that we have so much to offer. And Outlander has raised awareness of this, and I suppose it's raised awareness of how important that that heritage is. Yeah, absolutely. And um, and not only that, I think Outlander, you know, when we first started, we were in a, you know, a disused electronics factory outside how Cumbernauld. Glamorous. Yes, it was very glamorous. We had absolutely nothing there apart for some rats. But um, now, you know, it's got five sound stages. We've got huge workshops with, you know, thousands of people employed. 
not only that, we've got sets outdoors, and and I think it's not only helped the area with sort of local businesses, but also Scotland in itself. You know, the industry is, is really grown. We've got a lot more of film and TV coming over here, especially with the tax breaks that are there. But and as I said, as we said before, you know, look at the film locations. You've got you know James Bond, and you've got Lord of the Rings coming here, and you've got all of these amazing shows that are coming to shoot because we have got. Not only the crews now, but also the locations. You mentioned James Bond. I can't not ask this. Everybody does. You went for <laughs> James Bond. Yes. You didn't get it. No. Yet. Well. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. It was a, an amazing experience. And I talk about it in the book. But um, look, it's uh, he, he's a character that I think uh, any actor or, or actress would love to play. Uh, who knows where they'll go with it? At the time I went, it was Bond 21. That's the, the first Casino Royale that Daniel Craig did, but they were looking about younger, a younger Bond, and I, I've, I've got a feeling that's what they might go for. We need a Scott. Are we we need a Scott. A, yes, we certainly do. Now I can't talk to you and not mention whiskey, and you have your own whiskey. How did yeah. that come about? Yes, it came about well initially because I was feeling homesick. I was traveling a lot and felt that when I went into a bar and ordered a Highland or a single malt, you know, it, it just, it, there was a little bit of Scotland and it sort of transported me back to Scotland and, and the traditions we have here. And, um, you know, I was approached by a number of distilleries or companies to sort of work with them. And I thought, no, I really wanted to create something that, that I like, that is mine. And it was, you know, it's all been self-financed, designed myself, and uh, it's doing extremely well. And I'm really, really proud of it. I call it my baby because it is, you know, it's something that we've worked really hard at. And it is essentially, you know, a premium Scottish blend uh, that hopefully is everything that I love about Scotland in a glass. And you really zoom about in a Harley. You park the Harley out there today the when you came outside. in for this. Yeah. Your, your motorcycle helmet is on the table between us. Yes. I'm amazed the insurers let you do this. Yeah, they've actually... I'm not supposed to, and I'm probably going to get sued at some point. But Shall we edit this bit out? out? But no, I mean, there was one time we were um, shooting up in Aviemore and um, I had, I think, half a day off and they were shooting and I sneaked off and I went skiing and I foolishly posted a picture of myself on the slopes. <gasps> and of course, the producers were not happy. But I think at this point, they've um, they've accepted that, you know, I will kind of, I like a bit of adventure, um, but I'm quite careful. I'm not uh, reckless. Well, you have your pastimes and your hobbies, like your motorcycling. You have your businesses. Um, you have your fitness and well-being. You have the TV series with Graham, Men in Kilts, mm -hmm. that you mentioned. I'm intrigued. Is this diversification a result of those early days, those hard early days, and the powerlessness of being an actor? that you have set around yourself mm. alternatives, that you will not be that powerless again. Mm. Yeah, I th that's a really uh, interesting observation. I think you might be right. I mean, it's it's two things. I think it's the opportunity that Outlander has given me. Um, I think it's the opportunity that Scotland has got, my love for Scotland. You know, I love this country and I want to sort of share it with the rest of the world, all the great things that we have to offer. But I think you're also right, uh, as I said before, you know, being an actor, you, you're you usually waiting or being dictated to. And I think creating your own material or whatever it is, I think is really important. And it's a, it's a creative outlet. And it's so rewarding when you finally have whatever you've you know, put all your time and effort into. And it's in your hand, whether it's a book or a bottle of whiskey or whatever. It's, it's Or both. Or, bo or both. <laughs> that yes. sounds like a good night it in. It does sound like a good night in, yeah. Uh the book is incredibly well written. As I say, I genuinely enjoyed it. I know you're all supposed to say that when you're interviewing someone. I've mm. got it in front of me and I've marked out a passage. I'm handing it over oh, to you. Uh, Would oh, you mind reading a bit okay. for me? There you go. Sometimes I think of myself as a loner by design. Perhaps I just like my own company. It's certainly manageable. Or maybe if I don't forge those meaningful connections, I can't be hurt, right? I, I know that's not the answer, but it's how I'm wired in some ways. I've always had an awareness that I hold back. It's only now, looking back with all the time in the world to make sense of it, that I start to wonder if this walk might be a turning point in my life. In order to be our best selves, we have to learn and grow, right? Though it may take more than 100 miles to change my habits, it's certainly a start. So the question is, was it the start of a turning point? Or was that just you at that point being a little bit melancholy, 
Oh, I, I, I absolutely think it's a, it's a waypoint. It's a point where, yeah, no, I feel like I've put some things to rest. Um, I've uh, acknowledged certain things in my life and, and I'm excited for the journey ahead. So, yeah, I think it is. I mean, you know, you, you don't change overnight for sure, but um, it, it was a really important journey for me to take and to put it down on paper and also to, to reflect on where I've come from. And I guess that's the thing of every journey. When you get to the end, you're ready for the next one. And I'm, I can't wait to do the next adventure. And I think after the pandemic, I think it taught a lot of people to really appreciate what we have, especially oh. the wide open spaces and yeah. that spirituality you can glean for it, from it. So anybody listening to this who's perhaps never ventured out into the wilds, mm. what would you say? What does it give you? Yeah, I mean, look, I know we're, not all of us ha are lucky to have, you know, the, the highlands or the wild places on our doorstep, but I think um, it doesn't need to be that. It can be just, you know, going for a walk or taking yourself out of your, your regular routine. Uh, and what does it give you? I think it, I think it gives you time for you. I think in this world right now, we're so busy and especially with our, you know, connection with, you know, mobile phones and, and, and the internet, it's hard to switch off. So even if it's, you know, take an hour out or take a weekend and, and switch your phone off for, for a day, it's tough. It's hard to do. But after a while, you let the journey take over and you'll, you'll really enjoy it. Final question, perhaps the most important one of all. Uh -oh. Did you ever get a Lego figure made of yourself? <laughs> No, but I have received a lot of Lego recently from from fans, which is very sweet of them. Um, yes, I uh, I think. Uh, but the I'm, answer is no. So you no, failed. I mean, actually, come on, Lego, what's going on? But um, yeah, I mean, I, I yes, I I would certainly appreciate one. I presume also though that you're also getting lots of presents of mushrooms. I won't spoil it. But mushrooms figure mushrooms a, lot figure in a lot the book. Yeah, they do. Yeah, yes. Which it's right now is mushroom season. I had some beautiful mushrooms growing in my garden recently. Gosh, you really do like mushrooms. Well, okay, we'll leave that no, as a teaser. Yeah. Sam, thank you very much thank for you, taking Jackie. the time to join us today. And you are genuinely going to zoom off in your Harley. I am. Yes. And eat thank some mushrooms. Yeah. And thank you for joining us on Love Scotland. And I do heartily recommend Sam's book Waypoints, which is out now, published by Octopus in book and in audio form. And be prepared to want to travel in his bootsteps. And if you'd like to visit any of the National Trust for Scotland places mentioned here, including Glencoe, Coorus, Bannockburn and so many more, you'll find details on the National Trust for Scotland website. There's even a special Outlander page to guide you on your way. But thank you for listening from me for now. Goodbye. Love Scotland is brought to you by Think and Demus Productions on behalf of the National Trust for Scotland. For show notes, go to nts.org.uk and don't forget to like, subscribe, review and share.